Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Um, so we're, we're talking today about uh, a public health problem, uh, one that has afflicted communities around the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Northeast and, and many other places around the country, and one that we are doing something about. Um, and we're joined today, I'm joined today by members of our city council, whom I will introduce, our uh, health director, Brenda Weiss, uh, board of health member and emergency room physician, Craig Longo, uh, police chief, uh, Joe Cadero, and uh, one business leader from our community, very special business leader from our community that I will introduce uh, in a moment. And we are pleased to announce that the city is moving uh, toward uh, much stricter new regulations that prohibit the possession, sale, manufacture, and distribution of any synthetic drug within city limits. Um, synthetic drugs are commonly known or referred to as spice, K2, bath salts, potpourri, uh, synthetic marijuana uh, more generally, among other names that have been linked to serious adverse physical effects, including death when ingested or inhaled. Um, city leaders agree that these drugs pose a threat to health, safety, and the welfare of our residents and our neighborhoods. Uh, we are united uh, here together on this issue and with the adoption and implementation of these new regulations, our city is taking an important step forward uh, in our collaborative efforts to address the problem of synthetic drugs by eliminating them from convenience stores and gas stations. Um, municipalities have found it uh, difficult to effectively prohibit these drugs uh, historically in their communities because manufacturers often alter their chemical composition so it's tough to write a regulation for a particular substance that might be altered in, uh, around the wording of the statute at a later time. These uh, regulations seek to prohibit any substance irrespective of the exact chemical composition uh, of, uh, of the substance uh, being consumed uh, and focuses instead on the effects generated by the, uh, the substance so that uh, we can keep up with changes in um, chemical composition that the manufacturers um, might try to implement. So according to the Department of Public Health, uh, the Mass Department of Public Health, there have been reports of teens and young adults having serious adverse reactions to the use of synthetic stimulants and synthetic marijuana. And uh, as you'll hear from Craig Longo, many of these people end up in emergency rooms with uh, things like impaired perception, erasing heart, vomiting, reduced motor control, disorientation, paranoia, violent behavior, and psychosis. These are oftentimes very powerful drugs uh, that are all too often uh, affecting kids in our community, and they have no place in the city of New Bedford. Uh, I really want to thank uh, members of the city council for stepping forward, um, councilors uh, Abreu and Martins. Uh, uh, really took a, a strong leadership role in the effort to remove these substances from uh, store shelves uh, in the city to keep them out of reach uh, permanently from children. Uh, Council Winterson and City Council President Morad, who uh, will be, uh, I believe, joining us uh, in a moment, also played a strong role in uh, promoting this idea as well. I want to thank Brenda Weiss, whom I'll call up right now um, before I introduce the others. Um, for her role in figuring out how, how we were able to pull this off effectively. Uh, the matter will be up for a vote before the, uh, the Board of Health soon, but uh, through the uh, stewardship of uh, uh, Brenda Weiss, uh, we've been able to determine what substances we're, we need to go after, what kinds of effects they generate that we want to um, uh, eliminate, and the, the kind of wording that will be needed in, as a matter of policy. Uh, to deal uh, with the problem. So uh, without any further ado, let me call uh, Brendan Weiss to the microphone to talk a little bit about uh, what we're trying to grapple with and uh, how we're uh, going about it. Brenda. Thank you. So um, I want to thank uh, the mayor and the administration and the city council and the members of the board for supporting the development of this legislation. Um, it's really important for the city and I also want to thank the mayor's office for providing the personnel support in the health department by giving me a half an FTE this year to actually implement this important regulation um, for the city. So as many of you know, synthetics are on the shelves in our retail stores and they are accessible to youth and families in our city and a lot of these folks don't really realize how harmful these substances are. 
Um, you can talk to people and they'll say, hey, it's no big deal, it's on the shelf, so it's probably okay for me. And it's really not okay. They're very, very powerful drugs. Kids end up in the emergency room, they stop breathing, their heart stops. So it really becomes now a public health situation where it's our responsibility to protect these people and get them aware of what these products are and keep them off the shelves. So regulating synthetics, as Mayor pointed out, has been very difficult, largely because manufacturers are very clever. They put uh, wording on packaging saying not for human consumption, and so therefore they can leave it on the shelves and avoid federal regulation, because most of the regulation to date has been at the federal level. They also will change the chemistry of the compounds that uh, comprise the synthetic itself and then avoid the regulation that way. So it's been very tricky as how we can get them off the shelves when they keep changing the chemistry or adding this language to the packaging which made it difficult. So we reached out to other communities that have regulations and we found two really good models out there, one in the city of Lynn and one in the town of Wareham. And we took a look at those regulations and they took a different tact in terms of addressing this problem. And what they looked at were the physiological effects on the human body instead of the packaging and the chemistry. And that process for them seemed to work really well. And for us, it gives us an approach that we didn't have before. It allows our code enforcement folks to go into stores and demand that stores take it off the shelves or they're going to face a, a fine and even a shutdown of their, of their businesses, which is pretty steep in the city of New Bedford. So um, uh, over the past couple of years, we have done an analysis, more or less, kind of cursory on sort of the scope of the problem in New Bedford. We've reached out to a lot of stores over time and we've talked to them about the hazards of synthetics and told them that we are now working with City Council to come up with a regulation that will be happening soon and we're going to be coming back to see you about that. And as a result, we saw that a lot of stores voluntarily removed the product from their shelf. But unfortunately, there's still a few out there that have not done that. And so that's why we need this regulation. We always do outreach and education as our first arm of compliance, but in this case, we need this extra push, this extra enforcement to get this off the shelves and get it out of the hands of our youth. We will still continue to do outreach and education as we move forward, but this just really adds sort of another tool in our toolbox to incentivize, and that's the word I want to use, incentivize stores to do the right thing, to get this off the shelves and get it out of the hands of our kids. So, thank you. All right, thank you very much. So I, I, want, I do want to thank uh, Brenda for her leadership and technical expertise in this area for, uh, and for her stick to She really was able to move this along, uh, the, the form formulation of the regulation along very uh, quickly. Uh, I also want to thank the Board of Health for their taking this matter seriously and prioritizing it. On behalf of uh, the Board of Health, uh, I want to ask uh, Craig Longo to, uh, to say a few words. Craig is uh, an emergency room physician and has, uh, and in one of the, uh, the state's busiest emergency rooms, has seen it all. And one of the things that he has seen over the years all too frequently are people, including children, who've come in uh, exhibiting the effects of some of the drugs that we've been uh, discussing here. And he knows all too well that uh, the consumption of these drugs uh, has, it can have permanent effects uh, on, uh, on people in our community. Craig. Hi, so mm -hmm. I'm uh, Craig Longo. I'm an emergency physician at St. Luke's for the past seven years, and I'm on the Board of Health for the city. Um, as emergency providers, we're kind of the front line for a lot of these public health crises and a lot of these um, trends in drugs of abuse. Um, this collaboration between the Board of Health and the City Council, I think, has been a, a long time coming. Uh, we've known that these synthetics have been a problem for a while, and as Brenda was saying, I think trying to craft some legislation to kind of effectively ban the sale and distribution of these has been uh, tricky. Uh, and we follow suit for, from some other places that have had some success with this. You know. Um, Substance abuse, I think, is a major public health problem, not only because of the personal health problems that it causes, but also because of some of the systemic problems that we see, you know, the, the violence, uh, the injury, the trauma that come along with it. 
Um, we've seen a spike in the use of these synthetics over the past several years. You know, and uh, a lot of these things, I think a lot of people who are selling them don't necessarily understand how dangerous these can be because they are marketed by the people who put them out as being, you know, safer alternatives to marijuana or not dangerous. And I think we know that that, um, frankly, isn't true. Um, we see, you know, children, young adults, older adults um, who come in having used these. We've seen seizures, vomiting, fast heart rate. Um, frank psychotic episodes where people have become suicidal or homicidal. People have tried to jump out windows, they've tried to hurt family members, tried to hurt themselves. We've had people who've actually ended up on psychiatric admissions for several days after using these medications. I, I'm sorry, not medications, but synthetics. Um, so, you know, I think that this is a big step forward in the overall health uh, of the city, the public health of the city, and keeping, you know, the residents of the city safe from these substances that are probably much more dangerous than I think the vast majority of uh, people realize. So I think this collaboration will go a long way in uh, protecting, you know, the people in the city from these substances. Yeah, thanks, Craig. Thank you, Craig. All right, next, um, uh, next, I want to uh, to call to the podium uh, somebody who has a very relevant perspective, and uh, she is a uh, young Renaissance woman in our city. Uh, Hamali Patel has uh, excelled at everything she did at New Bedford High School, from which she just graduated uh, two months ago. Um, uh, she it was a star volleyball and tennis player, uh, and graduated with third in your class. Oh, just fifth? Just fifth. Just fifth. Just fifth, just fifth in the class. <laughs> and, um, and most importantly, was a member, a leading member of the Mayor's Youth Council. So, uh, but she is also uh, the daughter of uh, the owners of three convenience stores in our city uh, that have, um, as Brenda alluded to, voluntarily agreed to remove um, from their shelves uh, these types of substances. So we don't have to wait, uh, and this is an important point, businesses don't have to wait for the long arm of the law to reach them to be uh, convinced not to carry these items. Some folks, uh, like the Patels, are good corporate citizens. They understand that these substances create a problem and they're doing the right thing. And I want to ask Amala to come on up on behalf of her family to, um, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what they're doing at the three convenience stores, which are the Lucky 7 Mini Mart over on Cottage Street, the Lucky 7 Food Mart on Weld Street, and then Mark's Beverage on County Street. Come on up, Amali. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am Hamali Patel, and I am a 2016 New Bedford High School graduate. I am also the daughter of New Bedford business owners, and today I am speaking behalf of my parents and myself. Our family operates several corner stores in New Bedford, just as Mayor said, um, so I'll skip that. As a young adult, I believe it is important that we as a community are taking steps in New Bedford to prevent synthetic drugs from harming each other and our children in particular. We know that the use of synthetic marijuana can have a number of negative impacts. It can impair your memory, cause um, hallucinations, and violent behavior, lead to sudden death, and also it is the use, of synthetic the use of synthetic marijuana by youth can have devastating lifelong consequences, which often cannot be fully appreciated in their youth. That's why we need to ban these products from our city. As we've seen these items in many convenience stores, they are labeled as spice or potpourri, marked not for human consumption and offered often feature familiar cartoon characters like Scooby-Doo on the packaging. These are not harmless bags of herbs. They are not marijuana. They are not for kids. They are dangerous hallucinogens. To prevent young people and adults from danger of synthetic marijuana, our family removed these synthetic products from our store shelves, shelves a long time ago. And I'm here today to encourage other store owners to do the same. Don't wait for the regulators to take action. Step up and do the right thing for your customers and this community. If you need more convincing to do the right thing, thanks to these new regulations, 
you will face fines for carrying these items in your store. It will no longer be profitable to carry them. Thank you for allowing me to speak today and thank you to Mayor Mitchell, City Council, the Board of Health and Police Department for addressing this important issue. Thank you. I tried. Well done. She said she was nervous. Come on, let's hear from Molly. All right, it's all that Mayor's Youth Council training at work. All right. Um, so um, I don't think it doesn't look like uh, City Council or City Council President Morat can make it today. I know she was tied up with a number of things. So uh, I want to ask uh, Ward Two Councilor Steve Martins to come on up. And this is a uh, this is an example of a really uh, positive and constructive um, uh, effort between the council and the mayor's office to tackle what is a you know clear and present. Uh, public health problem and one that uh, folks in our community have recognized and that, that we needed to deal with straight on but in a way that was thoughtful and um, uh, effective so I just I really do want to thank all the city councilors present uh, as well as city councilor city council president Morad for their efforts and ask uh, Steve Barnes who filed the original motion with uh, Councilor Aru to, to uh, come on up and say a few words So of course the mayor had to get me up after Ms. Patel uh, had to speak, which is an amazing speech. And I was just telling Councilor Winterson how that was such a, that was very strong words and, and very smart by whoever invited this young superstar here up here. Because as we all know, and we were just talking about that, is that a lot of the Patels are a very a strong, uh, not only in New Bedford with different businesses that they own, but they own a majority of uh, convenience stores, businesses all across the state. Patels are a very powerful force in Massachusetts uh, and they play big in the market. So what you just said to here and sending a very strong message and leading by example of your family is one of the smartest things I've ever seen and I hope that they follow suit and pay attention very strongly to your words here today. Um, unfortunately, as Mayor Mitchell has said, Councilor President Morad couldn't be here today due to unfortunate uh, work commitment, um, but Councilor Abreu, myself, and Councilor Winterson are here on behalf of the full body of the City Council. And we all agree and have worked um, for many years now on banning synthetic drugs. We always believe that the use and the abuse of synthetic drugs is having a devastating uh, impact in our communities uh, across the country. And then we also understood that drugs that are so legally uh, the drugs are so legal, illegally across not only New Bedford but across the state as well. They're marketed very strategically, colorful, and they're brand branded correctly. And it was a concern to us as counselors and as, as the mayor stated that we're so in tune with our constituents. It was a concern to our constituents as well who for years have been reaching out to us of how these specific drugs can be sold at convenience stores and be and be legally done. And these drugs who that possess um, similar narcotic effects, uh, such as heroin and so on, uh, sold at these convenience stores. So counselors have worked very hard um, with Dr. Weiss, the mayor, the mayor's team, the board of health as well in the past year or so to tr really try to find a solution and we're very appreciative of also of the board of, board of health of taking this under their wing and using their expertise as this as well and as long and as well as uh, the chief of police's too and um, we found that these regu the, we found that and most importantly that these regulations that we had to put a stop to the sale of these deadly synthetic drugs but we also know that to do that these regulations had to be passed our retailers, as, as Dr. Weiss has said, had to obey by these regulations. And unfortunately, as we all know, sometimes that when we have to pass strict ordinances, uh, nothing is possible without enforcement. And we know that we all had to be behind of specific funding to ensure that Dr. Weiss and her team as well can go out there and do the job that these regulations and ordinances that the council and the mayor is agreeing on uh, to pass forward that she has the staff to do that. So funding was always an important aspect of these regulations and I'm glad that we're all on board uh, to pass um, the specific funding and regulations to move forward with her team. We always felt that um, 
that these manufacturers have to be held responsible. It's beyond our control. Uh, we know that it's an ongoing is issue uh, federally, but New Bedford has been in the spotlight before. It's not like we were in, uh, reinventing the wheel here, as Dr. Weiss and the mayor uh, have stated. These are bans that are happening across our state, and I'm glad that New Bedford can pass a ban itself as well and put the regulations in effect and have the staff behind it to enforce the regulations that we put forward. The council is very proud uh, to work with the mayor and the board of health as well. I hope this is a continued progress of our relationship, of continuing working. It, it's probably not a perfect regulation, but we'll always go back and we'll move forward and we'll make it as enforceable as we can. And it's promising to know uh, and I speak for all the counselors, it's promising to know that Dr. Weiss, who has sat in many of our budget sessions as well, will get the staff that she needs as well. And I'm sure that she needs more staff, but we'll always continue to look at it and work with the mayor as well and, and build a good partnership to ensure that those ordinances that are passed are enforced um, by her department. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, so I, I wanted to call uh, Chief Joe Cadero up for a moment, because I think it is, is part of, um, in, the, in the interest of completeness, uh, worth hearing a word or two about the connection between uh, this regulation, this type of uh, regulation of legal substances, uh, otherwise legal substances, and uh, public safety in our neighborhoods. Joe. I know it's only a prop, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, let me just uh, say kudos to Dr. Weiss, Councillor Ian Abreu, and the mayor and all the city councils <clears throat> for spearheading this initiative and uh, bringing some legislation that can uh, really help us enforce and get this stuff, this poison, and that's exactly what it is. It's poison off the shelves. And ha Hamani? Hamali. Hamali. And Hamali, for a great example, not only to um, seasoned business people, but to uh, folks our own age. To be an incredible leader and as someone said a superstar you know uh, this trend with synthetic marijuana started back in 2004 in the european market came to the states in 08 shortly thereafter the dea recognized uh, its potency and, and the impact it would have on our society and ever since then they've been chasing these manufacturers who continually change the formula uh, which has been creating havoc for them uh, these manufacturers, they put uh, incredible marketing money and time into their labels. They make it attractive uh, and enticing. And in the end, it's just poison wrapped up with a pretty nice little wrapper. Uh, and it's, uh, as Dr. Longo said, he, he gave you some of the symptoms that he has to treat. And if you look at and talk to folks, experts from the poison center, they'll tell you it's highly addictive, it's life-threatening, with some horrific symptoms from paralysis and even death. Uh, and that's what uh, my officers are dealing with every day and the folks at the emergency room have to deal with seeing those side effects. Uh, a difficult one uh, for us to see that human suffering. One that we are taking one big step. Thanks to Dr. Weiss and Councilor Ebro and City Council and the Mayor towards trying to reduce here in the city of New Bedford. But what I'd like to say is if we can adopt this business model that you've presented, which is uh, entrepreneurship with a conscience. It's a business model that profits and dividends doesn't compete with our community welfare and health. They can coincide. So we appeal to the business owners in not only New Bedford, but the greater New Bedford, just not New Bedford, because they'll cross the borders to get this, to adopt this philosophy of entrepreneurship and a business model to ensure our, our community stays healthy. I also challenge our reporters that are here today and other media outlets to expose the effects of synthetic marijuana and the manufacturers that are producing it and are, in, in essence, poisoning our loved ones. As they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. So I hope you take on that challenge. So thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe. All right, uh, does anyone have any questions today? Anybody, Kurt? Great, you guys are good. All right, uh, nice team effort, everybody. We appreciate it, and there's a lot of work to be done. But uh, you know, given the response of um, the Patels and, and others similarly situated, uh, we're pretty far along in, in eradicating uh, these substances from the shelves of the stores in the city. And, and um, we'll, we will hopefully not have to come down too hard on the others who 
you know, are not stepping up in the same way. And I think the chief raises a very important point that you know, the businesses in Greater New Bedford have to um, have to step up uh, as well, not just in New Bedford proper. So, anyway, thanks everybody. We appreciate it. Mayor, I want to make one more plug for the, the Thursday night uh, public hearing. Why don't you? Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, Ian did remind me. So we do have our public hearing this Thursday night, six o'clock at the New Bedford Health Department, which is at 1213 Purchase Street, first floor. Um, the Board of Health will be there. We'll have representatives from council, and we'll hear from the residents of our community uh, their reaction and their input to the draft regulation prior to its being voted on by the board. Good. All right. Thank you, Brennan. Thanks.